In this video, I will show you how to do a floating text view, or basically a hint that floats in an edit text. So if somebody clicks on an edit text, the hint that's currently in the edit text will then float uh, to the top. So let's see how to do that. The first thing that we need to do is to go into Gradle scripts, go into build.gradle, and we need to add one extra compile here. So we're going to say compile. And then we're going to use com.android.support. Dot, or not dot, the colon then, and then design, and then the colon again, 23.1.1. .1. So you can see if you can get the newest one there. You can see uh, at the bottom, it will normally tell you minus cutoff on the video. There's a newer one available, 23.3.0, uh, but it's still an alpha. So I'm just going to go with this one, 23.1.1. And you can just resync your application so that your uh, design library will be added to your project. Okay, and then when it's done, uh, we can carry on with the rest of the app. So you can see that 23.3.0 is available, so we could take the chance here to actually do it with 23.3.0 and resync the project. Okay, and then we're done. Okay, so let's see how this one works. So you make, must make sure that you get this compiled or the compiled com.android.support.design and just get the newest one there available. Okay, so I'm going to save then. And then the next part that I want to do is to go into the values, go into your styles XML. So we've got the app theme here. And what I want to do is I want to add a new theme in order to set the color for that hint that will float upwards inside of my edit text. So I'm going to create a new style and I'm going to call this style. Um, let's just call it text appearance dot app dot text input layout. And then we're going to use a parent there and the parent will be at Android. style and then a forward slash text appearance okay so we've got that that will be the parent for the style and then we can just close it down with that brackets which will actually create that new style element for you okay so that's the name and the parent and then we want to just add one item here so i'm going to say item and then the name for this item will be android text color uh, there we go android text color and the property for this item which will basically be the text color will be to go to my add color and then saying let's use the color accent so i usually just use the the color accent so if you go to your uh, colors.xml you can see there's the color accent color so i'm using that color as the color for that hint that will actually be floating Okay, so that's just setting it up, uh, a, a style that we're going to use throughout this application. So I'm going to close down colors, I can keep open styles. And let's go to the layout file quickly. Okay, when we go to our layout file now, where we actually want these autocomplete text views, I'm going to go into the text part there, and you can see that I've changed it to a linear layout and added the orientation to be vertical. And then what we want to do now is to add our own custom type of view here. So we're going to go with android.support.design.widget.textinputlayout. So we're going to go with text input layout. And if you close it down, you can see there we've, we've got the, the view that we want to use. Now it's going to give us some errors because we need, let me just see the Okay, we should have the layout height and the width. So that's not a problem. We will do that now. So we need to have an Android ID property. And I'm going to set the ID property to at uh, plus ID there. Because we're going to design a new ID or create a new ID. And I'm going to set that ID to something like floating. Let's just call it floating hint. Okay. And then we're going to need an Android layout 
height, which is the required one. And for the height, I'm going to set this to wrap the content. Then we need the Android layout width property, which is also required. But for this one, I'm going to match the parent. Okay, so matching the parent on that one. And then we want to add one more um, value here, which will be app. And then it's going to be hint text appearance. And then we're going to set that one to add style. And that's the style that we just created. Add style. And then we called it text appearance dot app dot text input layout. So that's the one we want to use. Now, if you go over that app that's in red now and you use alt enter, it will add this line of coding there at the top, which is app uh, res auto. Okay, so this is basically the enclosure for our edit text that we need in order to make it a floating text view. So the next thing that we want to do is to go and add a new edit text to this layout of ours. So I'm going to go to uh, the edit text there and just use a normal plain uh, text one there. So there you can see the edit text. So if I go back to coding, you see there's the edit text. So I'm going to copy that or basically cut that edit text there and just place it into this custom view that we just created. So I'm going to add it there. And then what we need to do is to set the width and the height. I'm going to set the height to wrap content and the width to also match the parent. And then for this to actually work, you need to have the hint property here. So we're going to add the hint property. And normally we will place the hint as an add string there, but I'm just going to type the hint there. I'm going to say enter username or let's say enter Uh, first name, let's just say into first name, that will be the hint, and you can already see the hint there. Okay, so what we need, you actually need to have an hint here, and you need to have an ID for this thing because we need to, to get whatever the user typed. So we can call it something like et name for the first name or et first name, whatever you want to call it. So you can see it's a normal edit text, but it's just inside of this custom one that we created. And also, if you get some rendering problems on the right-hand side, just click on Ignore. So you can see this, uh, this is basically how it will look like. And then I'm just going to make a copy of this one quickly, just so that we can have two of them. So I'm going to add a copy there. And then obviously, let's just call it floating in two. And this one will be called last name. And enter last name. So it will look something like this. And then you can also go into your edit text now. Let's just go to that one and let's set the gravity property to be center horizontal. And the same for this one, set the gravity property as center horizontal. So this is basically the layout that we've got. It looks like normal edit text, but in fact, what we did is we enclosed it with this custom one uh, directly over it. So I'm gonna quickly run it and let's see what it does. Okay, so there's the app running. So you can see when I click on the hint there, on this edit text, the hint floats upwards. The same for that hint. If I click on it, the hint floats upwards. So that's basically it for these um, floating text views. So what we're going to do next is to, when the guy starts typing something, let's say it start, start typing John or whatever, we want to have a drop-down box that suggests some words that the user could probably choose from. So in order to do that, Let's go back to our design. Let me just minimize this one a bit. I'm going to go back to my design. And the only thing I need to do to get that to work on my design part, on the, the XML part, is to change this edit text to an autocomplete text view. So if I use autocomplete text view there, this autocomplete text view actually inherits from an edit text. So it's still an edit text, but it's called autocomplete text view. Okay, so that's the only thing in your layout that you need to change. And if you run your application now, everything will seem the same, or will seem the same. Uh, but if we go to our coding now, we can set up that thing. So let's go and set up that autocomplete text view. So we're going to say autocomplete 
autocomplete text view and I've given this one the ID of ET first name. So I'm going to say ET first name. And then we can also link to it in our coding. So we can go and say ET first name uh, equals and then convert it to an autocomplete text view. And then call the find view by ID method r.id.etfirstname. So there we've made a connection to it. So now we can actually start working with it. So what we want to do now is if we want to have some items when the guy clicks on it, let's say he clicks on enter first name and he starts typing, we want to show an, a list of items that the user can choose from if he, he starts typing a specific word. So we need a string array for this. So I'm going to call the array names and just initialize the array. Now you can get this array from your database or wherever. So I'm just going to have some names here. Let's say James and we can add John and we can add, let's say Jenny and we can add Jennifer and we can also add let's say Janine and let's just add another one Johnny okay so let's say this is the text so you could obviously start adding names from A and B and C and all the names inside of this one string array and then if this guy starts typing a J it will only show the J's if it starts typing an A it will only show the A's and as he types it will actually help us to uh, well display the names appropriately Okay, so now what we need to do is to basically go and set up an array adapter. So we're going to say array adapter of type string because it's because of the strings array. So we're going to say array adapter of type string and I'm going to call it adapter equals a new array adapter again of type string. Okay, there it is. And then in the in the brackets we need as the first argument the context the second argument, I'm going to go to a new line, which will be the layout for that drop down. So I'm going to use the android.r.layout. So this is not a part of your own r.layout. It's part of the Android library. r.layout.simple drop down item one line. So that's the one we want to use. And then for the last argument, you need to pass in your names array. And then to that text view of ours or the edit text that et first name we're going to set first a threshold and the threshold here will be one which means that after typing one character it will start showing this list if there's obviously i've not got a's here so if the guy start typing a it will show nothing but if he starts typing a J it will give him this whole list so that's the threshold how many characters should the guy start typing before you start showing the list and then the last thing that we need to do is to just to go and say dot uh, set adapter and the adapter is the one that we created there so we're just going to say adapter and that's it for this specific uh, drop-down box for or the autocomplete text view Okay, so let's quickly run this app again. So I'm going to say run. And there we've got the app again. Okay, so you can see it's still floating text views. But if I start typing now, let's say an A, but my, my array does not contain A, so it will not do anything there. But if I start typing a J, you can see it gives me that combo box. Okay, and I can actually scroll down and select a specific name or just type start typing something. So if I start typing J-O, I've got John and Johnny. If I start typing an HNN, I will only select Johnny. So this is an autocomplete text view. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video.